What's up Tube Tube? Welcome back to Lou Guido's Chop Shop, the second best job boss channel on the tubes. Uh, recently I went down to Azrael's Armory and I picked up a scythe gearbox. Uh, well, I didn't pick it up. I had to order it, custom order. This is how it was shipped to me. There's a selector plate there and a patch, Aztec innovations patch. I like it when they send me a patch. In fact, just for, I don't know, trivia, I guess. I've got a couple of Azrael's patches here that I've collected over time. And I've noticed over time, they've gotten, like they've started yellow and then they've gone a bit more sort of drab and then eventually this one's very tan sort of drab color. I don't know if that's on purpose, but they've progressed over time. Um, <laughs> this is not a, this is not a ad for Azrael's or anything, but I have been shopping with Azrael's for quite a long time. And if anyone from Azrael's is watching or anyone who's not from Azrael's uh, is watching and knows what these are, if you know what these are, aside from obviously their thumb screws, if you know what they are, you know I've been shopping with Azrael's for a long time. Um, all that aside, this is the gearbox as came to me. Open the box. There is a quick start guide for the Aster because I've option to have the Aster, the gate Aster um, uh, fire control unit in there and this is the quick start guide and that is not a quick start guide that is a novel that is huge this is a huge this is a very detailed book quick start guides usually like a single card like like this that sort of thing that's what I expect quick this is this is a book I'll uh I'll read through that off camera uh, th there's a receipt uh, which shows you how much I paid. I actually paid more than that. That, there's a, there's, oh, there's another patch there. The Aster patch. Cool. I'll put that with my collection. There's a story behind that as well, how much I paid. Um, I ended up, that was the, the base price for, um, a build for the, the custom scythe gearboxes. Um, there is additional fees for adding uh, the split option, adding the MOSFET, and there's a long story that I'm not going to get into, but I ended up paying more than this because there was some sort of bug in their system that I accidentally discovered. I'm not going to get into it, but, but I ended up paying more, so I kind of dudded myself out of, <laughs> out of a bargain, kind of, uh... But uh, there's a, the T-piece in here, the adjustable T-piece that uh, comes with the box. Uh, that is a nice bit of CNC gear. This, in fact, this whole gearbox, it does look really nice. Um, I, I'll, get, I'll get to that. The, the T piece CNC and this ring here is actually adjustable, which is a cool idea. I mean, that gives you the uh, you know the depths required for your particular position. I mean, once you dial it in once, it it won't have to move ever again, but. It's kind of cool. It's got that little ring. I like it. It just looks like a nice, looks like a nice quality thing. I mean, pay a price for it, I guess. But like the the machining is nice. The gearbox, the gearbox. I'll get the gearbox out of the box. This is. I mean, it's the machining on it is is really nice. It's one of the one of the if not the best looking. CNC boxes I've come across and I don't believe this is Australian made I believe it is um, I mean Azrael's is an Australian company but I believe they they uh, contract these offshore to get these made up but whoever's doing them 
is obviously doing a fairly nice job because they they look neat. I can't yeah, I can't <laughs> I can't fault this machining. It looks nice. The the fact that it is a split box and I can barely even see the gap between the top and the bottom. It is a split box, right? I'm not I'm not dreaming. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a full split. It's a full split, the whole top, the whole top. But the tolerances are so nice that um, you can barely see the gap between the top and the bottom of the box. If you can spot it, you're doing well because I'm standing right next to it and I can barely see it. As I said, I got this custom built by Azrael's. I could have bought all the stuff and put it together myself, but that kind of defeats the purpose of um, a review, doesn't it? Because part of what I'm reviewing is the build, the assembly. So, I mean, what I should first do is probably get this into a blaster and get a baseline of the performance out of the box. And then I'll take it down and we'll have a look at what's inside. That way, that way there's no sort of, um, I, I don't know, like, like there's no, no question as to whether I did something that messed things up if I opened it up first uh, and well I know that's probably unlikely I um there's, there's probably other people who think otherwise <laughs> all right um, all right I'm gonna have to find an, an, a, a, a suitable receiver to uh, pop this into and uh, then we'll see how it goes Okay, um, bear with me here. Don't, don't judge. <laughs> don't judge. But I, I wanted to test this out. Um, and so, what, what else but a mutant? Um, I don't have a stock on it and I don't have a handguard on it at this time. And I've got only a very short barrel. Um, I did, this is a 70 Seventy percent port, I believe. Um, What's well, what I asked for uh, was a seventy percent port on um, this. So I probably I probably could go uh, a touch longer on the barrel. Um, okay, just uh, can sort that out anyway. Um, one of the things that I want to mention here: um, the adjustable T-piece. Now, when I was putting this in, I actually uh, was able to adjust this T-piece here with this t turning wheel to the precise location so that it would line up with this mag and that's uh, that was something that, that kind of made me a little bit confused. I'm like how can I change the length of the T-piece without having to like like I gotta make sure the nozzle seats right but then I remembered that I may not have actually mentioned this but this is one of the um, the tappetless nozzles, the Aztec tappetless nozzle, um, the Apache. Sorry, I should call it what it's, what its name is, the Apache. So yeah, so it is um, the Apache tappetless nozzle. So I guess because it's just basically powered by springs and pressure. Um, I guess you, you can adjust this forward and back a certain amount and it doesn't really matter because the nozzle just moves forward. Um, it doesn't have a limit. I mean, it has a limit, obviously, but, it, but it's not like a tablet plate limit where it's like it moves exactly this much. It, I guess the, uh, the Apache can move as far forward as it, it, as it is possible that it can move and it will only stop when it seats in the T-piece, if that makes sense to anyone, I'm, anyway, but yes, it is an Apache, it is tapperless, so, may have forgotten to mention that at the start, <laughs> another cool thing, uh, they've, they've, they've got their little logo there, and they've got the logo on the T, they've even got the logo on the trigger down here, like, etched into the trigger, I don't know if you can see that, but they just etched three times into the trigger, which is gold, which, um, I specified because gold. Again, don't judge from the build appearance at the moment. This is just for testing purposes. 
uh, and I just wanted to get a bit of a baseline before I take it apart uh, so that way you know I, I can see ex I've, ba I've basically taken the box out of the box and thrown it into this receiver so I imagine I mean I would never do that I would always I always tear it down everything before I, before I use it but I'm trying to get like an average person uh, perspective where you just go to the shop you buy you buy the box you whack it in the blaster and off you go play pew 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 yeah so that's that's what I'm trying to go for here so I've just chucked it in um, into this mutant and uh, I don't know, it is kind of fitting because uh, Aztec do do their own version of a mutant that I almost bought when I was in there. <laughs> it could have crossed my mind more than once. Um, but yeah, I had just chucked it in here. I have thrown in a um, SRC motor of some description. The the I I forget mag magnetic mag magnet something magna something src just because i had it lying around i could probably put a better motor in um at a later stage but I'm, I'm i'm rambling now let's just take it to the chrono let's just chrono let's get to the chrono already all right here we go semi first There were a couple of barrel breaks there, but you know, dry barrel, you kind of expect the first few readings to be a little bit off. Um, it's got a very interesting noise to it, a noise that uh, I don't think I've heard on an AEG. Well, no, I definitely have never heard a noise like that from an AEG, which I guess comes from the tappetless thing. So it's interesting. It seems like the first shot is a bit weird and then it sort of levels out. Um, maybe that's a tapetless quirk. Alright, so it looks around 280. I'm seeing a lot of 280. Uh, and yeah, there were a couple of outliers there which, which I mean, affect the average. I'm going to call it 280 average because if you look at this, uh, 280, 270, 279, 276, 282, 276, 240, 250. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it 280. I'm going to reset the board and I'm going to give it a burst of full auto. A burst of the full auto. Let's see how we go. All right. Contact. Woof! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> All right, let's see what happened. Uh, so there was some. Okay, so interesting. In auto, it seems to drive the numbers up a little bit. Uh, so that brought the average up to two ninety nine. There was some. There was some. No, that, yeah, there was some outliers probably caused by a barrel break or two um, but yeah very fast all right well I gotta say when I heard about the um, the tapetless um, Apache I I gotta say I was a bit skeptical because I feel like it's it's a um, it's a it's a solution w for a problem that doesn't exist. Like like there's no problem with a with a standard tablet plate. There's nothing wrong with it. There's there's no. I didn't feel that there was a necessity. To um, you know, try and reinvent the wheel. I feel like it was necessary to to 
and feel like it was necessary to uh, remove the tapper plate because you know it's it's not a problem I've never found tapper plates to be such a irritating thing that I want to get rid of them uh, but I can I can kind of see I can kind of see where they're coming from it's it's certainly like I'm I'm impressed I'm definitely impressed and uh, I'm also a little bit impressed with this. Is this gearbox? Is that the only one screw? Is there another one? Uh, oh, there's another one there, but that just holds it to the bottom. All right. The other thing I'm impressed with is this gearbox, right? So, so this is a split gearbox, and I was like, what's holding the the split together? Why is it? What's holding it together? Like, like it's it's firm. I've I've had split gearboxes before, and um. They just sort of pop apart if you t when you take the pin out they pop apart and um, I'm like what's holding this gearbox together it is it is literally a friction fit like like the the machining is just so spot on the tolerances are so good that this line is barely visible and it like it holds itself together like I've got a, pop this apart to get it apart right and it's split now and and here's where not having a tapper plate kind of helps like you don't have to worry about lining your tapper plate up here when you're putting this together that's one thing that I found annoying with with my previous split gearboxes you'd have to align your gears in such a way that um, they work you know around where your tapper plate is sitting so I mean it wasn't it wasn't a deal breaker it's just a bit annoying but again I'm not sure if it was enough to make me want to remove the tapper plate however I can definitely see that this system has something going for it I will say that I didn't find it a hundred percent consistent like it was it seemed like once you got it going, uh, the shots were were very consistent. But like like there was that that first shot that was a bit weird, and then you'd have a bunch of consistent shots, and then there there might be like the last one might be a bit uh, I don't know weird as well. I don't know what what that is. Whether it's maybe because uh, I mean the, ta the the nozzle sits back all the time. And uh, when the gels feed, maybe the first one. I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. But, I mean, you, you by the second or third shot, it's not an issue anyway. Um, I have no gripes with the assembly so far. I can see that, um, that they've uh, adjusted this tooth here for ease of engagement I could see that the compression is good oh that is good like I just draw this back with my finger and then I go to push it forward I, I literally can't push it forward the compression is good real good like I'm gonna have to push that forward with like a screwdriver or something oh wow yeah, that O-ring seal is the best I've ever seen. But, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is the Apache nozzle. It relies on that O-ring seal. It relies on it to move the, the nozzle forward. See, that's what moves the nozzle forward. That air pressure moves the nozzle forward. It's, 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 look, I'll give it to them. It's an ingenious system. It is, it is, and it works. And these seals are so good. Uh, they've got their own um, Aztec piston head in there as well. So, 
I'm going to take this apart and have a look at what's inside proper. Uh, one good thing about this is that uh, being a split, we can, you know, if we just want to focus on the air seal, we can just take the top apart and just look at the air seal. Look at how this um, Apache thing all works. So you can uh, not have to worry about your gears or your shimming or anything falling apart when you're just working on your air seal and vice versa. If you want to just work on your gears and your shimming, you just work on the bottom half of the gearbox. You don't... Yeah, you know, I like... The... I, I can see, I can see quality of life advantages here. Um, that's not to say that the, you know, the tried and true old school original method is no good. It still works. But this is definitely a new thing that's uh, very interesting. I gotta give shout outs to John H because he's the one who kind of talked me into getting one of these. Alright, so let's see. Here's the cylinder assembly. There's the piston. Now They've got a spacer behind the piston head to set it back and then they've adjusted the engagement with that there. Now, I don't know if this Apache... I don't know if it's like fit in there and and like it's not easily removed I mean that air seal is no joke so that's like that, that is an air seal and the air seal is required to push the nozzle so I'm I'm I'm, I'm hesitant to take this Apache apart like I I really want to, but I also the fact that it is working and it's working so well, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it, you know. Like it's uh, it looks good, it looks good. What can I say? Um, I d I don't want to muck around with that too much, but um, plenty of plenty of grease in here, plenty of lube, which is obviously good ah uh, I see I see I think part of that spacer behind the piston might have something to do with the fact that that last bit of travel can actually push the nozzle forward a bit and that as the nozzle returns it actually has it might not have anything to do with it, it's just observations I'm making. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm spreading grease everywhere, but pretty cool. I like it. Now, I am not going to take that cylinder head apart, but I will explain how I think it is working. So, there's obviously a spring inside uh, the cylinder head that's attached to the nozzle that brings it back and there's obviously seals around that nozzle assembly that are sealed and then when um, when the piston comes forward the pressure builds up and pushes that nozzle forward and then the spring returns it that's um look it's it's fancy it's fancy well, I'm well done for coming up with it I guess I mean I think similar things have been done in the past but I don't know this seems to seems to work I was I I gotta say I was skeptical <laughs> I was skeptical but um I'm coming around I'm coming around to it.
Uh, it's worth noting that the uh, spring retainer has four um, as opposed to just the two tabs, it's got four tabs to retain which is nice um, I feel those ones are a bit more stable and a bit steadier and how are, how are these chamfers how are, the, are these the chamfers on the front of this gearbox just turn me on chamfers are what separate us from the animals isn't that right it's look it's the machine works good <laughs> can't deny it can't deny it all right let's take a look at the bottom end all right looks like solid bushes which is um good choice good choice now um the 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 mag terminal plate here which is 3d printed uh is connected onto the bottom there with a screw uh i'm just going to take it off because otherwise it's just going to become annoying um, I could probably get away with not taking it off but it'd, it'd be attached to the top half of the gearbox that I want to remove so just going to be easier to take that off alright let's see and voila alright we have Um, a set of SHS gears here. Oh wow! Look at that! Look at that anti reverse. That is, that is a cool anti reverse. Um, let me let me get closer to that one. Check this thing out. This is some coil spring anti reverse business here. Look at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop the bevel out so that you can get a load of that. Make sure all my shims sound there. Look at that. That is a coil spring anti reverse latch. Now is that is that proprietary to the to the gearbox? Is that something that Aztec have come up with because I mean if it is that's cool um, let's take a look what the uh, what gears we've got here looks like we've got a uh, 13 to 1 SHS gear set uh, short stroked a couple of teeth one tooth two teeth looks like two teeth um, short stroke there uh, this could have been a bit neater on the grind I guess Maybe a bit <laughs> smoother, perhaps. Uh, but no, you yeah, know, not too bad. Does the job. Gets the job done. I think I'll actually take this sector gear back out again so that you can see the um, the Aster, the Gate Aster fire control unit in all its glory here. And uh, you can see this trigger, it's a special proprietary trigger that uh, uh, Aztec have developed in-house. And the uh, thing on the top here, the little cnc piece that sits on top, is actually like a, it's, it's a it blocks the light, because the Aster is an um, optical, optical MOSFET, so it actually blocks the light coming in from top of the gearbox uh, any external light could uh, make it play up so it, it stops that external interference from being an issue so that's pretty cool I like that gives you that precision trigger that optical precision there's a couple of little um, grub screws down here on the on the trigger as well there's uh, one in the back uh, it's for adjusting and there's also Another one in the front, and that sets your 
your depth. Now, I think there's another one in the back, or is that the same one that goes all the way through? I think it's going through, yeah, there's one that goes all the way through to set your stop for that, you know, just dialing it in to get that trigger dialed perfectly. All the shimming and uh, everything seems to be in order. Plenty of grease lubricating everything around the box, but not too much. Um, it's not slathered. One thing about having an electronic fire control unit is you don't want to slather it in grease because it will flick grease into the electronics and that's uh, never good for anybody. And so the, uh, the wires are glued in down here which is nice. Nice bit of wire management. Don't mind this little bit of heat shrink here, that was me. I nicked the insulation when I was doing the uh, motor install so I, I put a little bit of heat shrink on there just to give it a bit of insulation but that's on me that's nothing to do with what they did alright let's pop this back together get that sector gear in place get this little AR latch around back this is cool I, I, I love this thing is this a thing you can buy tell me tell me in the comments if this is a thing you can buy because because I, I love it I've never seen it before and it's really cool. I don't know if that's like proprietary to the to the scythe box or or what, but it's it's cool, I like it. Uh Alright, just gonna pop the top half back on here. Uh, make sure I don't lose any of my shims. They are held in with a little bit of dab of grease, which is nice. I like it when everything sits in place. It's, it's good when everything sits in place and you can easily just sort of slide the top back on. I hate it when things are trying to escape out of the gearbox when you're trying to close it together. But everything, oh, nice, nice satisfying pop there. Everything's staying together. Alright, we're going to pop the top half back on again. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how, how well that sits together. So I haven't pulled apart the uh, the Apache nozzle and you, just like me, I can't leave well enough alone. But um, I tell me in the comments if you think that I should do a video just pulling apart the Apache nozzle to have a look because I really kind of want to dig in there but I also kind of don't want to touch it but if you want me to do a full video on just the Apache nozzle hit me up in the comments let me know and I'll do a full video on the Apache nozzle um, alright well I think that's about it for me thanks for watching don't forget you can buy a patch from La Guido's Chopters Facebook hit me up um, and also you can buy a coffee in the link down below Shout outs to those who have bought me coffees, shout outs to Rip, shout outs to Adam Hoy. Um, thanks for watching guys. Peace. Oh, I really don't think I've shown this trigger enough. I, I, lo I love the detail in this trigger. Check out this trigger. You gotta check it out. The little Aztec logos in there. I don't know, I just, I like it. <laughs> okay. Peace.